Hello everyone, this is Adip. Welcome to my channel Movement Science. This is a part 2 of the shoulder stability. In this video, we are going to talk about the dynamic stabilization of the shoulder covered by Kavita Mem. Again, if you want to check out all the other parts of the shoulder joint complex series, you can check out the playlist over here and let's get started. So in a previous video, we looked at static factors for glenohumeral stability. Now we are going to look at dynamic factors. So now we understand that dynamic factors are the muscles that contribute to glenohumeral stability. So what are the major muscles at the shoulder? We know the prime mover is deltoid. Okay. Then we have the rotator cuff. Okay, so if you take uh, deltoid and rotator cuff, these are the two muscles which are primarily responsible for movements at the shoulder joint. Okay, so now we are going to look at the detail, uh, uh, you know, we, we are going to explore further on what are the, um, how does the, how do th these group of muscles uh, add to dynamic stability at the shoulder. So now we look at dynamic stabilization of the shoulder. So let us consider the deltoid as the prime mover. Now, if you look at the action line of deltoid, so so what is the action of deltoid? So, primarily it is uh, divided into th three functional units that is the anterior, uh, the middle and the posterior. Um, so, th those are the three functional units of the deltoid, but if you have to combine the uh, action of deltoid, you would get a single vector okay, which is directed. Uh, you can see that the vector is directed superiorly and, uh, and in the lateral direction. So, the primary uh, movement of deltoid would be to take the arm into abduction. So, now if you resolve this vector into two components, you can see that there is a huge translatory component, a translatory vector which is called as the f x. Okay. This kind of creates a shear force at the shoulder okay, in the superior direction and then you have a smaller rotatory component which is f y. Okay. So, now let us see what does f x and f y do. Now, f y is the smaller rotatory force and that is the force that is going to produce abduction at the shoulder. So, you can see that the contribution of the rotate. So, the rotatory vector is very small and a smaller portion of the entire force of deltoid is actually going to produce rotation at the shoulder joint. Okay. But you can see that the translatory force is very large all right, and that is the f x component. So, what will happen if this translatory force is too much? Okay. Now, when this translatory force is too much, it pushes the humeral head into the acromion process or the coracoacromial arch okay, and then it would cause uh, you know pain uh, at the subacromial area right if the superior directed force of the deltoid is too much. okay. So, it will cause excessive compression of the subacromial structures at the coracoacromial arch and thereby causing pain. Okay. So, so you can see that this superior directed force is kind of unwanted and it is a destabilizing force at the shoulder and it, it needs to be offset by a force that is given in the inferior direction. Okay. So, again we are coming back to equilibrium. So, in order to offset this large superior directed force which is caused by the deltoid, you require a smaller force which is supplied in the inferior direction. Okay. Now, we already have a force here which is in the inferior direction gravity. Okay. But obviously, gravity cannot be taken as the only inferior directed force because when deltoid causes abduction, we know that it is able to overcome the force of gravity. right? So, there should be another force which uh, you know acts in the inferior direction and then offsets the superior translatory force of the deltoid so that pure abduction can happen without causing much impingement at the subacromial area. So, now the superior um, directed force of the deltoid has to be um, offset by an inferior force as I told you. Uh, one is gravity, but gravity is not enough, we require additional forces. Now, these additional forces is supplied by the cuff muscles. So, the most of the cuff muscles are inserted to the greater tubercle. You can see that there is the first cuff muscle is the supraspinatus. The action line of the supraspinatus travels in the superior and medial direction. While if you look at the action lines of the infraspinatus, subscapularis and teres minor, they are directed to inferiorly and medially. Okay? Now, these three group of muscles, they have you know they have an action line of force which is 
you know similar. So, they are directed inferiorly and medially. The subscapularis is present anteriorly and the teres minors, minor and infraspinatus are part of the posterior cuff. Okay. So, now let us look at this in detail. So, we have, uh, so in the previous diagram we saw that uh, the cuff muscles are able to provide a force in the inferior and medial direction. So, what you see F I T S is the infraspinatus, teres minor and subscapularis. Together they produce a force which uh, moves in the inferior and medial direction. Now, let us resolve this force into the horizontal okay, and the uh, in the rotatory and the translatory component. The rotatory component is called as F y and the translatory component is again named as F x. Okay. Now, if you look at the rotatory component, you can see that the rotatory component is large and when this force acts in this direction, it is obviously going to compress the humerus against the glenoid. So, again it contributes to glenohumeral stability. Okay. So, basically this rotatory force acts in such a way that it compresses the head of the humerus into the glenoid cavity. So, that is one thing. Second is let us have a look at the translatory force. The translatory force is in the inferior direction and this translatory force in the inferior direction can actually offset the superior directed force that is supplied by the I mean that is a pro, that is uh, uh, you know that comes from the deltoid contraction. Okay. So, the inferior translatory force that is supplied or the inferior uh, translatory component of the force that is applied by the infraspinatus teres minor and the subscapularis is able to offset the superior directed force that is uh, that is uh, provided by the deltoid. So, what happens? The superior directed force of the deltoid is cancelled by the inferior directed force of the in, uh, rotator cuff muscles and now when deltoid contracts pure abduction can happen because it is a well balanced system. right? This deltoid is also contracting, the rotator cuff is also providing the inferior translation and pure abduction can happen without much um, you know impingement at the subacromial structure. So, that is one advantage of having the cuff uh, contract along with the deltoid. So, the cuff you can say that uh, by this particular arrangement, the cuff actually helps in maintaining dynamic stability at the glenohumeral joint. Now that we have uh, looked at the action of the rotator cuff muscles, let us shift our attention to supraspinatus muscle. Now, supraspinatus muscle is also a part of the cuff. Now, if you look at the action line of the supraspinatus muscle, it is directed superiorly okay, and medially. And if you resolve the vector into rotatory and translatory components, you can see that there is a large rotatory component which again uh, contributes to compression of the humeral head against the glenoid. But what you can also see is there is a short you know superior translatory component even that is provided by the supraspinatus. So, even the supraspinatus just like the deltoid has a uh, superior translatory component, but if you look at the superior translatory component you can understand that the superior translatory component is very small when compared to the deltoid. So, it does not have much destabilizing effect at the glenohumeral joint. Also, the superior translatory force of the um, supraspinatus muscle can be offset by gravity. Okay. So, gravity has an inferior directed force. So, this inferior directed force that is applied by gravity can create an equilibrium by offsetting the superior translatory force that is supplied by the um, supraspinatus. So, what you can generally say is that though supraspinatus has a superior component which is destabilizing, it is well balanced because it is offset by the force of gravity. Okay. And in addition to all of these, these rotator cuff muscles mainly the uh, you know the infraspinatus and teres minor are also responsible for providing lateral rotation that is very much required to clear the greater tubercle of the acromion and prevent any impingement. So, the, the these muscles have an additional function of also providing lateral rotation that is required when the supraspinatus and deltoid are abducting the shoulder. Okay. Another function, another muscle that I would like to discuss which can contribute to glenohumeral uh, stability is the biceps muscle. Now, as you all know that the biceps muscle originates, I mean it has long head and short head and the long head originates from the uh, you know uh, superior labrum okay, and then it pierces the capsule and then gets inserted down to the elbow. 
Uh, now the biceps. Now let's look at what are the, what are the additional uh, functions of the biceps. So the biceps kind of provides anterior and superior stability to the shoulder joint. Okay. Now the function of the biceps will definitely depend upon the elbow position because it's a two joint muscle, um, but it is able to exert some amount of uh, you know a stability at the shoulder uh, through its uh, insertions to the glenoid labrum. Okay. Now generally it is noticed that in patients who have uh, shoulder instability. Um, may, you know, uh, they, they, uh, if, if their only the labrum is involved, uh, they do not have much um, impairment. But if the labrum is involved along with a rupture of the biceps tendon, uh, the impairment seems to be much more. So you can uh, you can indirectly say that biceps, uh, you know, uh, contributes to shoulder stability through its attachments to the superior labrum. Also, we know that uh, when the arm is laterally rotated, it can act as an abductor of the shoulder. It also contributes as a flexor of the shoulder. So, these are the additional uh, factors that we know with respect to the biceps muscle.